10 fucking years on this website. Even saying that out loud is hard to believe. Uh, what is up, everybody? ZLZ TV, Zunogas, Man, Double Season, and whatever. Yes, today, August 11, 2020, is exactly 10 years ago to this very day where I uploaded my very first video on this website, YouTube. And it's hard to believe I'm still going after all this damn time. I've been going through channels like Zunogas, Man, Double Z's Man, Double Dark Z, WWF, WWE Highlights. Zunuga's Man is back. Freaking WWF, WWE promos. Mr. WWF and WWE promos. Double Z, WWE. The Double Z TV twice. The Double Z TV gaming twice. The Double Z TV vlogs more than once. WWE is war and so many other fucking channels. So many channels I can't even keep count. So today, thought I'd have a little bit of a treat here and show you guys my old wrestling belt collection. Might as well guide you to the basement first in order to get that done, so, one second. Alright, might as well get our way down there somehow. First, this room may kind of look familiar. In fact, let me get the scene set up right the way it used to be. The very room. The old living room. You may have seen some of them in my vlogging videos and some of my re-uploads here on this channel. Some of the stuff done in this very room, the very living room that's changed a hell of a lot over the last few years. Where I recorded my very first video, we had a different freaking entertainment center here with the old computer, which we don't have anymore. Recording Wrestling Encore, the PC gameplay for the very first time. Then I did a, did a shitload of videos in here before going to my room and everything. This is where the very first video was recorded on my whole journey. And the video was uploaded through a freaking Wi-Fi signal at McDonald's, which is slow as hell. I don't recommend it. All right, unless you're going to spend a long time at McDonald's, don't upload on their freaking Wi-Fi. It's going to take you quite a while, especially if it's in HD. So might as well make our way downstairs now. All right, making our way downstairs. Oh, I gotta get a drink first. Why does this scene seem so familiar? Get out of the fridge. Golly, you do not belong in the fridge, all right? I know you're cool and all, but you're my most prized possession. But golly, if... I don't know, like, it's been a few years that I've had this belt, and thankfully it's all name-plated and all. Never getting ready yet. All right, let's go and get down to the basement already. Jeez, I forgot how freaking dirty this basement is freaking gotten. Like, a lot of this is my stuff. Uh, pretend, but you, you didn't see that one. You didn't see that one. Nope, no. But I mean, we got a shitload of stuff like wrestling memorabilia, stuff for my unboxings, action figures. You got some of the pump, a lot of the Funko Pops. A lot of them are repeats. Uh, I don't know if I can say his name because of uh, what happened. Tracks and everything. And some of the belts. Just a few of them, which we'll go through in just a second. See, what's it? The fuck? Where? Why wasn't that one with the edge name play? What the fuck? Are you fucking kidding me? It just. Why the f Where the fuck did that name come from? Oh boy. Okay, so as you can tell, under this singular light, I'm white as fuck. But also, I got a pretty damn table full of belts. Now this whole thing will include even the commemorative belts, which I'm going to get through first, and the one championship you can't find on WWEshop.com. Might as well get through the commemorative belts, like I said, to start, because some of them are falling off the table. So to begin, like the weird thing about these commemorative belts is they are light as fuck. I I don't know how much these commemorative belts weigh, like you guys can see the oval commemorative version of the Intercontinental Championship back from 98 all the way up until 2011. Now, I could easily bench press this shit and not feel a goddamn thing. Then again, people could easily bench press me as well. So that's one belt, the commemorative Intercontinental Championship design. Second, the most recent 
United States Championship, also commemorative. I'm kind of glad they retired this belt, though. I mean, they've had this basic design, excluding the logo change on here, ever since the beginning of 2005, nonstop. It was about time to get an upgrade, and I just like the new design. I don't know if I'm going to get it, but U.S. Championship commemorative with the recent WWE logo on the top. Next up, the recent Intercontinental Championship commemorative belt design before they turned it into the... I don't know what kind of belt design you can say it really looks like. It's like a big spiral-ish like, circle there with extra emblems on the side and everything, but the old white strap that we had since 2011, commemorative championship, we see it on the Miz way too fucking often, but still nice belt design, especially looking back in the retro championship days. Back when I had a black strap. All right, yeah, oh. Let me turn the belt around. There you go. All right, next up, the commemorative version of the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, the one held by Drew McIntyre. You can hear it. That's the kind of material that's made for the commemorative belts. Not the kind of belt that you can get for like $100 at Target or anything. The actual commemorative belt from WWEShop.com. In fact, I think I would have to look around somewhere, but I think I got a lot of these. Uh, I know I see some on the side. I see a lot of the bags that these championships came in, but... I don't want to have to <laughs> go through them all, but it's nice to have commemorative versions, especially, there's nothing wrong with having a commemorative version of the belt, especially if you're like on a bit of a budget crunch, but you can definitely tell when these are the commemorative belts by the weight and the material. Current WWE World Heavyweight Championship freaking commemorative belt. Next up, the also the commemorative version of the World Heavyweight Championship. You guys can kind of see it on there. WWE logo up on the top. Oh, and it's really glossy. Fuck, holy shit. Yeah, I wanted to get the the official one, the replica belt, but the commemorative one is also a bit lightweight. It's easier to even carry on the shoulders, especially with the other belts that you guys are going to see in a moment. But there's one championship I got like this that you guys will see coming up as the replica form that can sit upon there. Let's see, two more commemorative belts. The WWE championship design that we had from after Elimination Chamber 2013 up until SummerSlam 2014. I think they call it like the Super Bowl ring. I never really cared for it though because when you had this championship design debut, the red that used for the bottom switch didn't really stand out. It kind of looked like all the colors blended together. And this was the start of the championships having side plates. Which was a nice touch instead of having to go with the basic name plates that just seemed generic. But like I said, this was the one design I did not care for. I liked the upgraded one where they added the new logo there and made the red part at least stand out instead of making everything look like they blended together in terms of the color scheme. And the other commemorative belt, I know I did this as an unboxing at some point, the WWE Universal Championship back with the red strap design, or as I called it back in the day, the fruit roll-up belt. Now I got it with the blue strap and I don't know if I dare get the updated uh, replica version of one with a blue strap, because I honestly don't give a flying fork about it. But still, it's kind of nice to have her a bit of aid. Alright, that's all the commemorative belts. Now for the replicas. First off, of course, the big smoking skull belt for Stone Cold Steve Austin with the WWE logo. And of course, you guys can see on the back, with the whole rattlesnake type skin interior for the inside of the belt. Excellent choice. So Gold had it on and off for about a year, I think. He got it somewhere around the time of Fully Loaded in your house back in 98. We last saw it somewhere around 99. I think the last time might have been... I don't know if it was like SummerSlam at the latest back in 99. It was either that or um, when uh, Stone Cold lost it over the edge of The Undertaker. So it was one of those two. So let's set that aside because I want to keep the replicas separate aside. Now the original... Purple the Barney the Dinosaur Purple Strap Cruiserweight Championship. I swear, it looks like Barney the Dinosaur had sex with leather with the way this belt color is. And I know they've updated it. They've got a black strap design, which I do like. And it has the updated NXT logo in the middle. Maybe I'll get it. I mean, I'm fit enough to fit with this Cruiserweight division. Then again, I can't fly, sadly. But it is a nice little belt to have added in there with the... Here's the championship. Let me get these all facing the right way, God damn it. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll go. I'll save the big belt for last. Now, of course, the reason why I did not get the 
eventually the replica version of the World Heavyweight Championship because I've got the replica WCW version of the belt. And I know they they got some customizations now because of Ric Flair where you can get his nameplate for the bottom of the belt and you can change the side plates to stuff involving his world title wins, which would be cool, but I don't know if I'm really interested in adding those to the belt or anything, but I still love this belt. This one is a fucking classic. Without a shadow of it out. 16, for the rep, uh, referencing the 16 time world heavyweight champion Ric Flair. Woo! Nature Boy, baby. Alright, this belt I remember I bought because I thought I would meet, see this man again at Pure Pro Wrestling, but he did not show up. And I'm glad I got this off of WWE's website, and I do not plan on getting the freaking silver version that they made back in 2008, because that belt did not look good for it. The ECW Championship. I believe this is the WWE Remake version. I know if you compare this side-by-side -side to the ECW Original Championship, you can see the differences. I think this is supposed to be the WWE Remake, because I think the original ECW one had purple on it, if memory serves me right. This is definitely like a great one. It would have been cool to have seen Sabu again. I know I've got my Facebook photo with Sabu there on my Facebook page where I met him and everything. I had the WWE Championship belt. Would have been nice to get a picture with him also with the ECW Championship on the side. So that's a nice addition. Now this one I had to buy on eBay because at the time when I was looking for this, it was not back in WWEshop.com, which was kind of odd. And that is... The short-lived Edge radar spinner belt that he had after SummerSlam 2006 until Unforgiven 2006. I mean, they just basically took the WWE, main WWE Championship design that they had at the time, changed the center logo. I think they might. I think rumors had that they had another custom version of Edge or Edge's belt ready or getting ready. I just realized there was dust and everything all over it, but they couldn't get it done in time. So that's kind of a shame, and that. Name plate is still freaking haunting me. I just... I can't look at that name. I can't. Alright, back to focusing on this. This one actually got bought because of Secondhand Wrestling, where he posted this on eBay after talking with me in DMs on Twitter. Worked out a bit of a price after he posted it on eBay. I bought it there using PayPal credit. And it is the WWF-branded logo version of the Big Eagle Belt that we saw from the night after WrestleMania 14 up until shortly after WrestleMania 18 when it was switched over with a different championship design. And on the back, it says officially licensed WWF product figures, toy company, P.O. Box, uh, from Rhode Island. Gave the telephone number, website, figure toy store, uh, figuretoycompany.com, copyright 2001 with the WWF logo on the back. So thankfully, this is not one of those belts that you would get from overseas, from like mock belts or stuff from like eBay or even those people that keep messaging me on Facebook wanting to sell me belts because I get friend requests and messages from them all the damn time. That's what happens when you collect belts. You get people messing all the time, but glad this is an official one rather than one of those like ones like extremely thin freaking plates and everything. I gotta remember to dust this off. This has been sitting on my floor for a little while, but this one is a beaut, especially if you guys can see on the top there, WDF logo, although you can see the shine in it. I absolutely love this belt. That's because of how, also how flexible the leather is on there. Now, of course, the replica version of the Universal Championship. And, of course, that lighter sound tapping means it's the metal version with the side plates that can actually be replaced on here, rather than that hollow sound that you guys heard earlier to indicate that it is commemorative. So, absolutely weird. I still can't see in the strap color. I mean, that's what happens when you see a lot of these championships that you see in WWE nowadays that they just follow the same base formula, like, template design. Like, if you want it, let's say you were playing a WWE game and it didn't have the Universal Championship, just take the WWE Championship, change to the color of the strap and the color of the swish on the bottom, there you go. There's no creativity in it. Especially when you compare the WWE Championship to the World Heavyweight. It's nice to have variety there. Now then, next up, the current WWE Championship belt design, and of course, Lighter sound, another replica. Sadly, I don't have any uh, side plates to have for these belts. It would be nice to have custom ones for yours truly on here and everything. But yeah, the current WWE Championship design that we've had since the night after SummerSlam 2014 definitely stands out more than the previous belt. Because like I said, with the logo, definitely like stands out more than it's the WWE logo. It didn't have the colors blending together. 
And I just realized one belt I don't have down here is my personal custom belt. And then again, it's hanging up in the closet. Let me get that, because I consider it a belt. Alright, I found it. My pride and joy right here. This thing has been sitting up in my closet because I'm not letting anything happen to it. You guys can kind of tell. It's hard to tell with the lighting, but with that mill logo, the double ZTV, the WWE Championship Spinner Bell with my logo on the front. It's hard to tell with the lighting because of everything on here. Side plates, got my old double ZTV logo kind of blending in there. Parody of the Raw's War logos, and then on the other side plates, yeah, maybe, there you go, now you can see that, yeah. The double ZTV parody of the SmackDown logo, so now maybe you guys can see. Yep, up close, I should have done that the whole fucking time. The double ZTV for the center plate, and of course, saying double ZTV on the side, my special custom belt. Thank you to Undisputed Belts, by the way, for getting this done, I actually really love it. I think if, if there's ever a chance where they can make belts with, like, thicker plates and everything, I might do a bit of an upgrade, but definitely my own personal customized belt. You sit right here, my darling. Maybe or maybe you will not go back in the closet. All right, this belt I wanted to bring up because I remember I was talking with Chase25, aka Ulysses, where he was showing his version of this belt, and he, I did not know the difference between V1 and V2. And that is the undisputed championship version of the WWE Championship. This, I know a lot of people praise this belt. It's not personally one of my favorites, mainly because... We compare, it kind of looks like the Intercontinental Championship oval design, except like they took the main plate and like expand the size of it and turn the blue black. It's kind of like how it looks for the center plate. I think he's, uh, Ulysses said this is V, like the version one belt, because I think V2 is supposed to be a bit thicker. And from what I've seen in videos, like you can see it like on the strap itself, there's kind of like an outline on the outside, like surrounding the center plate and everything to show that it's V2, but I think it's supposed to be bigger like for the center plate for V2, kind of like when The Rock held it at leading into SummerSlam 2002. Still a funny belt, but not my personal favorite design, especially when you compare it to like, like I said, with the Oval Intercontinental Championship design. It just looks like they kind of did a bit of a copy there. But it's still a fine belt. We saw this from, like I said, after WrestleMania 18 up until John Cena switched it with a different championship design shortly after WrestleMania 21. Now, of course, the Butte itself, the winged Eagle Championship that we had from the big event or main event or whatever it was called back in February of 1988 all the way until it was retired the night after WrestleMania 14 with Stone Cold Steve Austin, the Wing Eagle Championship. Yeah. Amazing names that you think of this. Associated with B. Hogan, Savage, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, maybe Psycho Sid. The Undertaker and so many others that have held this belt within that 10 year time period. It is an absolute piece of treasure. <sighs> I really gotta get my belts clean because they're getting covered in dust and everything, but what do you expect? They're staying in the basement. Alright, and also, the WWE big, the big Eagle Bell with the WWE logo. In fact, let me show a bit more of a closer up to show you guys and hopefully you can't see it. Yeah, with the WWE logo that came from the WWE website. This one I bought first, before the WF logo version of this belt. Still a big butte. Like I said, you saw this from the night after WrestleMania 14 up until shortly after WrestleMania 18. A belt held by names like Triple H, Stone Cold, The Rock, The Undertaker, Vince McMahon for some fucking reason, Big Show, Kane, even though he had a different variation. That would also be nice if they release a version, the version of this belt that they had between the night after WrestleMania 14 up until around Survivor Series 98 where it was like, a more of a light blue strap, or a darker blue strap, and you had the center plate that was like blue here. That would be the other variation that they're missing from this belt. And in fact, now that I think about it, that undisputed title belt, the version that I got here, I don't think they're selling a WWE shop at the time of recording. I know they re-released it with the Eddie Guerrero version, which I think is version two there as well, and a different strap, but they don't have that version of WWE shop right now. <sighs> Jeez, I got a load of shit, load of shit on my fucking table. And then, of course, the Super Bowl ring type version of the WWE Championship, like I said, from after Elimination Chamber 2013 up until the night of SummerSlam 2014, and of course, Replica. Like I said, I gotta get side plates at some point. I mean, why not? So, yeah, the other big championship design. I mean, I like the feel. This one feels a little fle more flexible with the straps, even though I don't try to make any flexibility, but it feels nice. Now the non-WWE championship that I got here for the replica. 
This belt costs a good load right here. The current Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship belt design. I don't remember how much it cost. It probably had to be at least $500. It's usually just sitting right by my other TV in my bedroom. This thing freaking screams World Championship when you see the, when you freaking look at the design of it. Like freaking crown on top, Ring of Honor champ, Ring of Honor logo in the middle, World Champion like logo on the bottom. Ring of Honor logo on the side plates as well as the earth on both end plates there. This thing is just an absolute beaut. I absolutely love this design. And then of course, the design with this belt, I will take to the grave with me. I know people have mixed feelings about this belt. This one is my favorite. And usually if you think of this spinner belt, maybe you think of me, I don't know. My pride and joy, the old spinner belt. The very belt that I've got my own nameplate on. This belt, I know a lot of people, I know a lot of people kind of shit on this belt and everything, and they mock it and all shit like that. To me, this is a symbol. This belt is a symbol of, ten, of just non-stop hard work. People know I've been on this website, like you guys have heard at the beginning, for 10 years now. This is a symbol of perseverance. You know, I've been known as the champ since I came up with that name back in 2011 when I first said on my show, I'm the champ. Without the deal with the bitches part, people may be wondering why I'm known as the champ. And I'm like wrestling otaku, I don't call myself the champ of YWC. Just say the champ. Why is that a fitting name? Because usually when you think of the word champ, you think of somebody who does not give up. Somebody who does not back down tuck their tail between their legs, they take an obstacle, and they go right through it. I've lost seven channels since I've been on this website. Five due to copyright strikes, two due to sudden takedowns. Did I walk away? Nope. Yours truly is still standing and walking and still fighting on like a real champ does. And when you think champ, you put a belt on him. Nothing more symbolic than this one. Always being around my shoulder, sometimes in my hand. This belt I will take to the grave with me, guaranteed. Even though I've had some people at Pure Pro Wrestling wanting to challenge me for the belt, at least a few of them, like maybe Tay Riser, Samson Real, Tommy Vendetta, who tried to super kick me, maybe Freedom Ramsey, who you guys have seen a bit of a video on of him confronting me and wanting this belt. I'll check on all covers, but I guarantee you, at the end of the day, when I'm getting buried six feet under, this thing is going to the grave with me. Not a shadow of it out. Damn straight. Now that's not all I want to show you guys. Just to add really to this, there are two collections I want, well, one or two collections I'll show. I'll show you guys one collection because there's another one that's specifically going to be someday for the gaming channel, but... How about we go through my wrestling autograph collection as well to add upon this? Alright, I could at least get a couple of autographs shown from down here. One of them, like, broke from, uh, I think it was one, yeah, Pro Wrestling Loot, the Willie Mack one, the box broke, it fell over and everything. Oh yeah, I forgot, I still had a box copy of WCW on the NES, this game sucks by the way. Let's see, Johnny Goodtime autographed action figure. Mr. Joey Ryan, thankfully he did not flip me with his, you know what, he got one for Kamala. Also got an action figure one autograph for Matt Morgan, that came from one of the unboxings as well. It would have been nice to have gotten this urn autograph, but I think at this point uh, Paul Bear had passed by the time I got that. Oh yay, Slammy! Yeah, I forgot I never uh, showed you guys that I had this. Oh yeah, and I also got special custom uh, Funko Pops, like the one for Ric Flair. That's all the autographs down here, but we got plenty more upstairs. Let's get to it, and you are coming with me. All right, folks, now on to the other half of this whole celebration video. That is my whole freaking autograph collection, which I got. A lot of these that I, some of these I got in front of me were from the unboxings that I did during one of my live streams, and others include seven Funko Pop action figures. And of course, I got the big old briefcase full of my other 
grand collection of autographs. Let me first get through the Funko Pops first. Braun Strowman, the current WWE Universal Champion. The Nature Boy, 16-time World Champion, Ric Flair. I think a lot of these were from, uh, I think one of them... I don't remember where this one came from. I remember this came from one of the unboxings. I can't remember the specific one, but... Charlotte, Nature Boy's daughter. Well, it's got it on the back. Oh, this one was High Spots. I was about to say, I did not know where this one came from. I realized certification on oh, license there, so... And with Charlotte, I think the rest of these are also probably from, uh... That wrestling club, if memory serves me right, because I remember Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels, my favorite wrestler of all time. You have the bad guy, Reza Ramon. We have the ever so beautiful mixed us Alexa Bliss. And this one I remember, this came from one of the Russell Cage show or WrestleCon shows. My stuff on over my table. One and only Sting. I remember this also came from that wrestling club. This was like a side exclusive one for a limited quantity. Bunch of these getting autographed by Sting, and I'm glad I was one of them. Get him. All right, and I get the unbought the rest of the autographs. Some of them I still had on the table because, like I said, if you guys saw months ago, I did like a bunch of unboxings on a live stream. Never got through the boxes until now. It's finally here in my room. Might as well get those first before I get into the briefcase. Ricardo Rodriguez was a special sign. Autograph one, courtesy of Pro Wrestling Loot. You got the blue guy, blue mini. New Age Outlaws, Road Dog, Jesse James, and Badass Billy Gunn. Double autograph there. Announcer Ian Riccoboni. Now this one kind of got banned. I apologize, Miss Alicia Toot, the interview queen. I gotta get that flanned out when I can. The one and only enforcer, Arn Anderson. I got hair on the side. Why do I have got hair on everything all of a sudden? And the next two, let's see. Oh yeah, Oljmo, that's, almost forgot. O-J-M-O, Oljmo. It's hard to tell some of the autographs of their names that came from the UK that I don't recognize. And of course, Grado, who kind of looks like he'll Steven if Steven kept his short haircut. All right, come on, man. All right, let's see, handpick, like special artwork and autograph by the demon, Finn Balor. And of course, the man who has been making a name for himself yet again, Eddie Kingston. Yes, I still got some of the promotional work, courtesy of Russell Gray UK. Uh, let's see, one autograph in the back. I forget the name again. I'm going to have to look through uh, High Spot's website. But I also got a double autograph here for Juice Robinson and David Finlay. And when they are World League Tournament champions there. And also three big pieces of artwork. I think these came from High Spots. With autographs there, including Goldberg. Stand back. There's a hurricane coming through. And of course, Pentagon. Did you know right there? Penta, sorry, Penta L0M. I gotta get that right, because otherwise people are gonna correct me in the comment section. Now, oh, the big one. Oh, got it upside down. I keep finding freaking debris on it and everything. This is where, I'm surprised I got any room left to store all this stuff in, because All right, get to the gigantic briefcase of autograph, the double autograph, Crime Time, Shad Gaspard, and JTG. By the way, rest in peace, JTG, or sorry, Shad. Yeah, Botchamania. The legend, JR Jim Ross. Brett, the Hitman Hot. Uh, let's, one name, uh, I keep forgetting, let's see. Yeah, um, somebody's gonna have to refresh my memory. I know I've got his autograph at least once or twice, can't remember the name. Back-to-back -back autographs, Sabu and the Sandman. You're gonna see Sandman name a bit more in just a bit. Rosemary, thank goodness she was not injured with the whole sexy star incident. He's the Boogeyman! He's coming to get you. He's gonna spit worms all over your face. The late great King Kong Bundy, and on the back side, one that I was absolutely ecstatic about. My favorite wrestler again, the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. One and only, Sonny Ono. The man known for selfies back in the WCW days. The MMA prize fighter himself, Ken Shamrock. It's five knuckle shuffle time. You know, a different kind. The vampire himself, Gangrel. The original Bray Wyatt, before he became the Fiend. Finn Balor. 
Oh, if I see his name around, the Smirk Busters are gonna get kind of pissed. Miss Johnny Gargano herself, Candice LeRae. Carl Anderson, before he got released from WWE. Uh, let's see, Brian Cage, who currently holds Taz's FTW Championship. And on the backside, Thunder Rosa, so double autograph, I believe. Yeah, this came from Wrestling Loot. WWE 2K Autograph Special. The plaque with John Cena from when he won the WWE Championship from AJ Styles Royal Rumble 2017. And it includes the ring canvas there on the top. And yes, I had to get the special versions for these things for the games. Cody. And we all know what Smart Busters are going to say they say that. Let's see, Glacier. The second one of Bret Hart. That same artwork. Another name that's starting to miss my freaking memory and everything. This is what happens when I get a lot of autographs and I don't keep everybody's information there on the sides. See, double autograph, hard up. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Like, this one I was had to be from last year, and I wonder if I'm remembering this rough head. Top of my head, because it was all summer checklist that I never went through. Autograph, I still gotta remember. Begins with a J. I'm gonna have to look through everything to remember all this. Uh, let's see, another one for Gangrel. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. The late great Vader. See, there was the million dollar bill autographed by Virgil. Courtesy Pro Wrestling Tees. Miss Vicky Guerrero, excuse me! Double autograph here, the Nature Boy Ric Flair and Hillbilly Jim. See, another one for Gangrel, holy crap. Uh, the Monster Abyss! Uh, let's see, I believe Tony. It's either. Uh, I don't think it was Tony Mamaluke. Uh, the other one from the FBI. Shit, I'm trying to remember, trying to remember. Ah, I'm gonna have to look their names and everything. So what happens when my memory isn't the best and all that? Uh, let's see, one that looks familiar. Portrait wrestler image from the... Uh, another name that seems familiar. I can't remember. Stupid fucking memory of mine. Let's see, you got another one for William Mack. Ah, oh. Kane! That's gotta be Kane! Let's see, Pocket Pocket X-Pac. Uh, some of you are starting to stick a little bit. Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. I believe this one, uh, I believe Ray Phoenix, if I am correct. Let's see, Kevin, back then known as Kevin Steen rather than Kevin Owens now. Oh, look! ACH, who finally admitted that he get overreacted and treated the t shirt thing a little poorly there. Radar Superstar Edge, one of the greatest of all time. See, the man who hasn't been doing anything as of late, and this was before that wrestling club officially closed, Bobby Roode! Back when was the last time Bobby Roode was on TV? I can't even remember. Let's see, Tessa Blanchard. Uh, let's see, is this one Zack Sabre Jr. or Will Ospreay? I can't remember. Let me see. Oh yeah, it is Will Ospreay! Thank goodness, thank goodness for the certification of authenticity on the back for a reminder. Let's see, Darren Young, when he died his hair after leaving WWE. Kurt Hawkins, who's now in, I believe, AEW. And, of course, the other side, Edge. I believe this may have been the last one from that wrestling club. I remember they had Edge for one of their final ones. Uh, let's see, Greg the Hammer Valentine. Let's see, Jerry the King Lawler. Oh, man, I'm uh, Let's see, one that's... Uh, something, one that's slipping my memory again. I gotta freaking get more familiar with uh, wrestling from the UK. Let's see, Pentagon. I have a color so. Man, I am getting freaking mixed up with names. I gotta start writing names like right on the back to refresh my memories. Let's see. You got Roxy. Woo! Is the real thing now, Dave? Yeah. Yeah, D Lo Brown. Is it for real? Piss on the seat. Ah, Double J Jeff Jarrett. Let's see, Kylie Ray, I gotta remember to uh, follow her on Twitter. Uh, two personal ones, like two that I got in person also from Sabu. And one that I got that freaking excited me all so well. The Man Beast Rhino. Wish I could have gotten my picture with him, but I had a lot of people waiting behind me. Let's see, RSP. I think a couple of names might have come from CZW. Can't remember the names off the top of my head. I gotta get more familiar with a bunch more wrestlers rather than just WWE stuff. Uh, let's see, Phenomenal AJ Styles. Uh, let's see, Kip Sabian. I think the name's a bit more legible. The late, great Harley Race. 
MJF, who people keep comparing to The Miz for best bad guy. Another one with MJF. Uh, let's see, more names that are eluding me and everything. Finn Balor, another one. Uh, Jake the Snake Roberts. The lo uh, legend, living legend himself, Terry Funk. Uh, let's see, I know... Oh, uh, it's a Japanese one. Who is... What's his name? It's like, who hung or... I can't remember, like, his name. I remember he's been on WWE's website, but I can't remember the name off the very top of my head. Uh, it's... Oh, Molly Spartan. I forgot she also had her uh, name, like, ad name for written down there for social media. Now, this one, Zack Sabre Jr. The one and only you suck, Kurt Angle. Let's see. Wait a minute. What about the Pumas and everything? This is why I got to save the freaking inventory list for names and everything. I keep getting rid of everything. Oh, the super sexy Scarlet Bardo. Think Aja Peak. Oh, Asha Pereira. I think this is one of the high spots ones where they had like an all female theme for all of it. Heartbreak hit Shawn Michaels again. Okay, one, another name that is freaking eluding me. So many names elude me. This is what happens when I can't read handwriting. This one I remember was the big one from Poros and Lou, like a rare special bonus one for the Heartbreak hit Shawn Michaels, as it's set on the back. One of the lucky winners there. Uh, let's see, Ricardo Rodriguez autographed one of his bow ties there for Pro Wrestling Loot again. Super crazy. <laughs> Papa Shango. He's back. Eric Bischoff. Double autograph for the Nasty Boys, Brian Knobs and Jerry Sags. Johnny Mundo, when he autographed a little part of his uh, whole information about his uh, movie, Boone the Bounty Hunter, he also put a message there on the back with his autograph again. Mr. Zack Ryder, who's now under his real name in Impact, I believe. No, AEW. Freaking Kurt Hawkins is over, a.k.a. Brian Myers is over in Impact. Drew McIntyre, a.k.a. Drew Galloway. Uh, let's see, you got Psychosis. Scarlet again. This seems beautiful. Badass Billy Gunn. Peep Show host Chris John. Man formerly known as Simon Gotch. Can't remember what his in-ring name is now that he's on the Indies. World Warrior Animal, Goth Princess, Jimmy Jacobs, uh, let's see, of course, Marty Skrull, Who Wants to Walk with Elias, Mr. Alistair Black, who's suddenly not doing anything really of much WWE, and his wife, Zelina Vega. Surprised to see her in a Team Rocket outfit once. Very surprising. Uh, let's see. Look at your logo, local. Man, more names that are eluding me. I gotta keep these freaking everything organized because I can't easily read signatures that well. Let's see, Ultimo Dragon. This man you do not want to mess with. Meng, aka Haku. The man who recently completed sexual harassment and sensitivity training. Sammy Guevara. Sammy Guevara. Hopefully he learned his lesson from everything that came around. Suicide. Don't commit yourself to it. Let's see, the little man Swaggle. The former Raw GM. Let's see, another one was super crazy. Another one for Jake the Snake Roberts. Another one for X Pac. Another one for Road Warrior Animal. Let's see, oh, I believe, yeah, Sammy Callahan. Careful with the baseball bat. The phenomenal AJ Styles. Adam Cole, baby. Mr. Joey Ryan. Let's see, another one for Sammy Callahan. Kind of like comic book poster type thing. Tito Ortiz, or Santana, Tito Ortiz, the fuck am I thinking? And on the back side, Jim Cornette. God damn, how did you get that all mixed up? Sorry, Mr. Cornette. Let's see, Axe and Smash of Demolition. WWE 2K20 special autograph with Kurt Angle there, and it's still in the wrapping there. Special Collector's Edition. Uh, let's see, Luke Gallows. The Young Bucks. Who do the super kick way too often. Killing the move, guys. The Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Trading card from the former NXT talent, Bull Dempsey. You never hear about him anymore, do we? Tully Blanchard. Oh, uh, see, you guys, we all know my history with this gentleman, Dustin Rawls. The Godfather. Oh, uh, the franchise, Shane Douglas. Bruce Barber Beefcake, who looks like he was coked out of his mind in this picture. 
See, she's not like most girls. Nia Jax, who got in suspended indefinitely on TV. Zack Sabre Jr. Oh, Tessa Blanchard again. Beautiful woman, and of course, don't need to say his name. This is Terry Runnels, who I believe came from uh, the only Grapple Merch unboxing that I've done, even though that video's nowhere in sight. Da -da -da -da. I believe I got this off WWE's website, or WWE shop for John Cena. You got a post. I forgot I still had a little poster in here. Who signed this one? Wait a second. Oh, yeah! Mr. Joey Ryan. I, on a, artwork on a bare skin rug. I feel violated just looking at that one. No offense, Mr. Ryan. It's kind of a little creepy there. This one back into the tubular. Uh, the ECW hardcore innovator of violence, Mr. Tommy Dreamer. And I know the autograph's hard to see because it's dark there. You guys can probably kind of see it in the light. Yeah, through his body. Whole effing show, RVD. Another X Pac one. The cleaner, Kenny Omega. Mr. Joey Ryan getting a hand job. <laughs> the king, Jerry Lawler. Ah, Manic. Personally autographed one courtesy of Pro Wrestling Loot. Johnny Mundo, back when he was still under Lucha Underground. The late great China. Rest in peace, China. Another one with Joey Ryan. I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> Mr. Vince Russo, double autograph, Mike Camden, and SoCal Crazy. Johnny Gargano, I can't remember if he was in NXT at the time of this one when this came around. The one with Ricardo Rodriguez. This one came from one of those tons of like money ones down there. I know it wasn't faintly autographed out in front, but it still has it on there, so I'm still putting it here. Shane McMahon, first me 32. Eugene. The first autograph to come from the first that wrestling club unboxing, Hulk Hogan. Uh, let's see, Willie Mac, aka the Mac. Schizophrenic man himself, Al Snow, and the guy who came around of one too many times at WWE, James Ellsworth. Uh, let's see, Aria Davari, who's the brother of Sean Davari. Another one for Vince Russo. I'm telling you, bro. Uh, let's see, the high flyer himself, Paul London. Another one for Brett the Hitman Hart. WWE 2K17 exclusive one for Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, let's see, TJ Perkins, for, uh, second cruiserweight, first cruiserweight champion, I believe. Uh, let's see, you got Bandito, and the other one, Caveman Ugg. Yeah, I remember this was like one of the special theme ones for uh, this one PWG from High Spots Network or High Spots Box. Let's see, I think Sugar, Sugar Fly. Oh, one of the. I recognize the name Sugar in there. You got another one from Marty Scroll. His name, Marty Scroll's autograph is like everywhere at this point. Ryback. I don't get why everybody keeps talking about him. Oh my God! Joey Styles. WWE 13 Special Edition Exclusive, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I bought the freaking exclusive one recent, not too long ago, courtesy of Amazon, so that came with it. Uh, let's see, another one for Gangrel. The late grade, uh, one and only Bobby the Brain Heenan. Another one for that wrestling club, Zack Ryder. Another one courtesy of Johnny Mundo. Another one, Eric Bischoff. Let's see, D. Wagner, I believe. Got freaking hair all over the place. The late gray, mean Gene Okerlund. Ah, Diana Hart Smith, beautiful woman. All right, let's see. You also got Typhoon. I believe that was one of the tag team themes that they had in there. Uh, let's see. Rock and Roll Express, no autograph. Headbangers, no autograph here, as well as Eric Bischoff on the back side. Ah, uh, Stan the Lariat Hansen. He will take a damn head off. If you're not careful. Another one with Marty Skrull. Leo Rush. I'm glad is done screaming lastly all the time. We also had one here courtesy of that wrestling dub for Grimm's Toy Show. Thought that was a fun one to have on there. Uh, let's see. BW. Yeah, I believe this one was signed exclusively by Stevie Richards for BWO. Uh, let's see. Mac Cross. I think wrestling is forever. I think I might have their, one of their stickers for that. Uh, let's see. Seth Rollins. You got another one for Kenny Omega. Got one for here for Kamala. Another old one for Grado. 
Flock Leader Raven. Broken Matt Hardy. Let's see, once again, Mr. James Cornette. Papa Shango. Another one for Will Osprey. Man Who Can't Learn to Wear Shoes, Mr. Matt Riddle. Nick Foley signed this one, courtesy for Pro Wrestling Loot, or Pro Wrestling Crate, sorry, for Mr. Sacco. See, I know <laughs> Marty Skrull, Jesus Christ. You got here on this one, but you have J.R. Jim Ross. Another one for Bruce the Barber Beefcake. Finally, a new one. Carlito, that's cool. Uh, let's see, you have one for, another one for Rhino. Another one for Pentagon. There was a comic book done and autographed by Nikolai Volkov. Rest in peace to him, by the way. Some of these I found from the High Spots website include Maria, beautiful as always, AJ Styles, DDP, Samoa Joe, let's see, Will Moretez, Moretez, ah, Moretez. Name is Finlay and he loves to fight. Let's see, Monster Abyss again. Another one added here from Marty Skrull. Let's see, B Boy. Let's see, another one for the Young Bucks. Let's see, Lee Blue Pants. This one I think also came from WWE Shop website, The Ascension, even though they didn't do much. Double autograph for, uh, let's see, I think, I'm, yeah, Ivan Putski and Superstar Billy Graham. Double autograph added there. When and only Chavo Guerrero, I wish his career could have recovered after the whole thing with Hornswoggle. I know you guys can probably kind of see, let me think where I can pull out the sleeve. No one for the blue meanie. Say hello to the blue guy. Uh, let's see, Dalton Castle. You got Moving to Guerrero. Jake the Snake Roberts. Matt Hardy, I think before he became broken. One of my favorites here, the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Larry Zabisco. Almost done, folks. Little medalist Kurt Angle. Another one that's kind of slipping my memory. I gotta freaking keep tabs of everything on all these. <laughs> Superhuman! Fuck that shit! Tyson Kidd, kind of a shame he can't wrestle anymore. Got a couple for Joy Janela. I know my friend Taylor would absolutely love these at some point. Uh, let's see. Paul, uh, might be Paul Roma, uh, like, uh, I remember looking this one up recently. Hardcore Holly, got another one for Sabu. Marty Gennetti, whose information just got leaked out to, as of recording this for screenshots he posted on social media. Tito Santana, badass Billy Gunn. Uh, let's see, yep. High Flyer Jack Evans, now he's not wearing a hat backwards. WWE 2K15 exclusive, one for Hulk Hogan. Mr. RVD. Another one for Psychosis. Another one of the Young Bucks. Comic book one for Hurricane. Like the smaller version of it. Conan, who I know uh, gave him commentary, he's putting him in the dick bag. AJ Styles. Another one for the Rock and Roll Express. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Brian Cage, no one Ricky Steamboat, and DIY themselves, Samasa Champa and Johnny Gargano. I think this came around the time that the tag team officially broke up. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, my entire wrestling autograph collection. Jesus. That is one insane collection to ever have. But to conclude it all, like I wanted to say, Thank you to everybody who's ever supported me over the last 10 years, no matter which channel it is on or how long it's been for. I legit cannot believe I've been uh, here on this website continuously pumping out content for this long with rarely any breaks. It's absolutely mind-blowing. Let me know you guys saw in the comment section below. If you want to support the channel, just share it on social media and maybe even this video. I just realized my necklace is still chained together improperly. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys saw in the comment section below. Support the video with a like. If you're subscribed, make sure you got that bell on so YouTube doesn't try to ghost my uploads. And uh, also, the original Get Down guy. Guess he took your Twitter handle. Yeah. Fuck off. Stop trying to ruin the wrestling community. So thanks for watching, everybody. Like, comment, subscribe. See ya. Champ is spoken bitches.